Well, social cognition is very simple. It's about how people make sense of other people and themselves and the world around them. And we all need to make some, form some understanding of each other in order to navigate the world and get up in the morning and go about our business. So the cognitive miser is a description of the thinking person as taking shortcuts and having a sort of limited information processing capacity. So it comes as a computer metaphor um, that only people are limited processors. And so we have to take shortcuts. So for example, my own research is on stereotyping and you can think of a stereotype as a kind of shortcut because we don't have the cognitive capacity to individuate every single person we meet. So the book was written, um, in fact, to shape the field, which we thought um, was exciting and new. Uh, the cognitive approach was in contrast to um, motivational approaches like <coughs> Freudian psychology, for example, which got very complicated and full of theoretical baggage that couldn't really be tested empirically. And so uh, the kind of thing we were doing was um, sampling from across the field of social psychology for approaches that would be con that would fit well with this cognitive approach that is how far can you go in explaining social interactions by just using the premise that people have limited capacity to process information So stereotypes are constructed in lots of ways. Um, one simple way is that somebody tells you uh, that group of people is a certain way. And if it's your parents or your peers, then you might just believe them. Um, or maybe it's a news source that you trust that says all those immigrants are worthless. Um, they can also be formed in theory by experience. Um, but most people who have very strong stereotypes have in fact no experience with the people that they're stereotyping. They can be undone by experience with people uh, in benign circumstances. So especially if you're working with somebody who's different from you, um, it's a very good way to be motivated to get to know them as a person and realize that you know, they're, not a, um, they're not a stereotype, they're an individual. Well, stereotypes are um, quite harmful, uh, especially in today's globalizing and immigration-heavy uh, environment. And, you know, really one of the skills that people need in the 21st century is the ability to get along with people who are different from them. And there's a sort of optimistic finding from our own lab, um, and a related one from my husband's work, actually, showing that people get used to people who are different from them that if, with exposure to diversity over time, assuming nothing bad happens or a demagogue doesn't exploit the differences between people, um, then people get used to other people. They say, oh, those people in the cafe, they were speaking some other language. Maybe they were migrants, but they seem fine. And over time, people get used to each other. Well, it's hard to know everything because we're just learning now what the um, effects are. Um, one of the sort of discouraging findings is that people are blaming the virus on foreigners or on people who are not like them. And so, um, you know, um, our president wanted to call it the Chinese flu. And in, on other occasions, people have called, named viruses after locations and countries and people and you know really they can come up anywhere um, and so that that really does create um, prejudice and, and, and discrimination and in this country there have been some unfortunate incidents uh, with regard to Asian people at the moment so that's the sort of negative bleak side of things um, 
the sort of more benign side is that people are very distinctly social animals. And we've discovered how important our sociality is to us. And so, you know, all the technology that we have is being employed to find ways to make connections with people. And um, people are getting in touch with people that they haven't seen since grade school. Um, so there's some kind of uh, redeeming features of this. Uh, also, families are spending more time together. And if the family gets along well, that's a good thing. If the family doesn't get along well, that can be not so good. But so it's complicated, and we're, we'll be many years learning what the effects have been.